So I don't know what you want to call it, if it's echoes or something else. Anyway, uh, I, you know, it's like conversations in my head, just like other people here. I've explained them in earlier editions of this vlog. .ca. Uh, picturing also the standard formatting now for the vlogs, which will be the title, and then to instruct you that they actually go down to numbered sequences, and then to inform you in one of these corners here, most likely this one, um, that uh, the number of the vlog video that you're watching, and then over here the permanent sales pitch on dot to dream dot ca, where we partner for life on whatever aspect you'd like, as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, and. Um, Pretty extreme proposition, but it's coming from an agreement which I'm told involves me handshaking me on a plane that the others never imagined even existed. So I'm not talking about redefining their eternity, I'm talking about coming out from the shadows of between their concept of eternity and what I'm calling eternity <laughs> and telling them that hey guys, you know, what you're doing on here is all wrong. <laughs> I don't know where you're from, but where we do it like this, this just doesn't happen. Now they're trying to accuse me of having had my head taken over by the aliens, that this is a new form of consciousness that's striking up, he's able to work his way around having YouTube videos yanked down from him by coming up with a uh, nameplate for life sort of deal, and then piggybacking the signal off of all the different platforms. And it doesn't even have to be like a video presentation, some of the vlogs are ready, there are ones to Facebook posts. I can point them to anything. I can point them to anything. And I can sell them too. But I don't need to sell the vlogs. So, um, being real then, we're not involved in money at all. This is number nine, which I was actually going to leave blank and say that it's a reflection of eternity. But now that we're on the subject, where our mind is, speaking personally right now of myself, it's somewhere in between the eternity and the infinite. Apparently. And apparently I've known this since 2014. Yeah, I did. So. So. Well, technically I might have known earlier, but, you know, consciously recognized it definitely in 2014. And that was already after I started the story. So I, I literally started the story, folks, on Blind Faith. Blind Faith got me here. Just college professor, professor, professor. Checking out to see uh, how, like the consistency aspect of his environment after reprogramming himself with A Course in Miracles. I'm trying to figure out the world in, in the context of A Course in Miracles, which will be added, should be added to the title here, acim.2dream.ca. And that was in an earlier one too though. Pretty sure I remember typing that there somewhere. So let this one be a number nine and then a peaceful night and a sweet dream. Because talk to dream, you make the dream. You are the author of your own dream. That includes every timeline going forward. So not only is predestiny not true, but you are a non-linear, more than infinite, also eternal being, which allows you to bend the rules of time and space and make miracles happen. To collapse the need it takes for you to achieve any harmless goal you desire, as long as that goal is consistent with the legal structure of your environment. So you might bump heads with a few lawyers along the way, and then a few doctors, and then a few, and then, a, and then, yeah. You should definitely check out, let me remember this, I just don't want to forget, vlog.number2dream.ca, good, Whew. close chance that I almost forgot there, this is number nine at all, everlasting state of happiness equals zero chance of forgetting, how is that reflection and look on earth, how do you think? First you're going to see his picture like all over the news overnight almost. And then you're going to be like, uh, and then it's, uh, uh, but don't worry about it. Just take a breath. <sighs> Just, you know, you, you can, I have a pilot license. I'm willing to try flying a helicopter. I would love that experience actually, truly. Like, just, like, honestly, 
put me beside like a pilot, like a flight instructor who's got a little bit of guts in him, because my first one didn't have any guts. He said I was a kamikaze. So put me beside a flight instructor, like a test pilot. Okay, test pilot. Okay, test. That. Okay, there we go. Then now we're matching spirits. Here we go. Okay, let's do this pro properly. Here's my request going forward. <sighs> Dear sirs, I would honestly like the chance to fly a helicopter. I would so love it. I mean, they have just like the pedals actually do something on an airplane. They don't even do anything. It's such a letdown. You know, your airplane's got pedals, and you know what the pedals do? They turn the wheel on the ground so that you can steer the airplane like you're driving it on a car, on, as a car. That's what the pedals on the airplane do. It is such a disappointment. You don't really use the pedals at all while flying. I mean, you kind of do. They kind of make the tail go, like, push it around a little bit. But, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just the helicopter's got, like, it's more like a all three at once deal. I really want to, I had a taster somewhere along my life. I want another one. So, but this time, so, here are the new rules, okay? Because this is not my, our shared environment. This is our shared environment. I have earned the right to experiment with myself. Please, thank you. Okay. I would like a test pilot to be <laughs> Just in case anything goes like seriously out the other way. <laughs> I will say to the test pilot, you have control. And he will say, I have control. And then at that point, it's no longer my control. But until I say that, it's my control. So, I am in control. This is how we communicate as pilots. I am in control. That is what I want to do in a helicopter where I have zero training on how to fly the sucker and I've read nothing about the manual. I just want to go in there and start pushing buttons and levers until I get the thing started and off the ground and then flying around in circles and the guy beside me can land it, okay? He can land it. That's our agreement. So, but I get to take it up and around as long as I want from no knowledge. And I want it to be like a normal helicopter. So. Yeah, that's what I would like. So that's my wish. So I guess number nine is a wish too. That's a cool wish though, hey? So and I still want the Dodge Viper with the outfitted police sirens from the Barry Police Department who have been steadily ignoring me since 2014 at the very least. 2013. They actually told me that they'd lost the... They told me that they lost the emails that I had given them. to intentionally trigger the arrest on the 2nd of March, 2013. They testified that they lost the emails in the June 2014 Superior Court trial in the Ontario Superior Court of Justice at Barry. Case file 13-205-SR. And I was being accused of criminally harassing the church treasurer on grounds that I was causing her a reasonable fear for safety because that was a three squawks. She told the police that I left a flower and a book, the book gift wrapped, and the flower with a card, and it had my name on it, and I left it on like her doorstep, and then I like disappeared. Whew. Scary. So she says I was stalking her. Uh, she didn't say the date of that incident, but the date of the incident was actually, uh, it was in August 2011. Like, uh, uh, the first August, uh, first Monday in the 20s of August, so like 22nd, 21st, 22nd, 21st, 23rd, somewhere around there. But it was definitely Monday, because we had gone to church together on the Sunday, sorry, not church, uh, the BLT Cafe in Barrie, Bistro, BLC, BLC Bistro. Anyway, Matthew Swain, the minister, he had a nice gig set up there where we would meet and just listen to music and chat and stuff like that. And that's when I really uh, noticed her. And But I had a dream about her five days earlier that I would meet this girl. And it was the physical experience that I would have while seeing this girl in that moment that tied me to the dream that I had had five days ago that caused me to even walk over to her to begin with. And no, I didn't recognize her from a few months earlier when we had actually been together in the Swain's living room. And when she had gotten up to go to the bathroom, her boyfriend, then ex-boyfriend, uh, now, then, ex and in uh, August, her ex-boyfriend, but at the time her boyfriend, gave me their address that I should come over because he was able to help me with some computer problems I was having uh, with my computer uh, and work-related printing issues. So, 
So somehow in her eyes, that made me a dire criminal to be feared. Uh, but, you know, I guess it might have also triggered, like, other... Because we met, oh, every week, every two, two times a week at least, maybe. At least every week, at least every week. We were meeting at the Duckworth Street, Tim Hortons, and also the Williams. South End uh, coffee shop after sometimes going to the church there in the movie theaters, which she had all turned us on to. We were part of that really nice group, and that is to quote Mr. Michael Hone, who is uh, oftentimes still seen in videos strumming his guitar online. W-H-O-N-E. Wonderful last name, actually. Foundation of the word honest. So, um, so we were all part of the same friend group. And, uh, somehow, somehow that turned sideways. And I did write about that, but that's an ancient history. And so are any setbacks. But what's really striking is when the police got involved. And the police got involved on exactly the 31st of August, 2012. To inspect my residence about the care of a child. And it was Watt. PC Watt, Police Constable Watt. I went to my my door there, 9.30 at night. And he walked in and I put my hand out and I said, you're not coming in with a gun. So we, and I, just because I opened my door doesn't mean you can come in. So, so we had a good heart to heart and went outside and I said, listen, we're you're fine. It's fine. I was, so, and the next day though, the plainclothes detectives came and they were the ones actually that threatened to uh, arrest me if I ever contact the church again. And here they were sending me their spam, and I had asked to be removed from their email. Uh, advertisements in May 2012, after the Good Sense Budgeting Workshop on the 21st of April 2012. So all these numbers are still embedded into me because I've been writing them and saying them for 12 years. So this is like the ancient, ancient part of the story. Like we're digging up. I'm not even sure that we want to be digging that far, but I guess I should get some of that on my too. But two cars crossed. Hold on. So if I really take a breath and sit down and think about the moment now, in Taiwan is my wife and my, our two cats and our house full of belongings and we really have a beautiful relationship and it's truly, it's a, really nice. And I'm having some difficulty getting back there. I was sort of accused of crime for the last six years in Taiwan after spending three years accused in Canada. So I've turned a little bit of a, an eye my way already by the law enforcers, at least on the local level from wherever I've been in the last 12 years. So I'm not new to anybody investigating any of this. Heaven forbid, no, it's just you guys that are new to the story. I mean, on my record sheet, I have all of the psychiatrists in Taiwan have refused to give a high court a mental assessment about me, and then the court didn't know what to do with me. And you see the green aura around me? Okay. The court didn't know what to do with me. So then they hastily kicked me out of Taiwan, and I mean, like, literally. Couldn't have been any more plain. And then five days after I arrive in Vancouver, I find out that my high court lawyer was arrested and indicted and put to jail for uh, running an organized crime syndicate right there. And I was the I was the guy that everybody was abusing. So this is like the last six years of my life in Taiwan. And before that, it was in Ontario. So I've had a pretty I've had a pretty shit shitty go at, at it. So. Um, I'm not by any means trying to make a jest or understate any of this. 
it's just doing nobody any good to focus on the past. Because in the future, the outcome of all of this is the stuff that like makes like Atlas draw like a guy with a globe on him and stuff. Like Maybe we're not seeing it from the same perspective yet because I'm not seeing any downside at all to any of what I'm doing. So for anybody to be questioning any part of what I'm doing is really nonsense to me at this point. And then all I can really say is, well, I mean, like, did you want to read about it? Uh, because I've already published it too in the Taiwan court and the, the website there is 2019. Talk number two dream dot com. You got it. 2019 dot talk number two dream dot com. That's my secret. I wrote down that I'm the author and my name is the Antichrist. But really, I mean, like, I mean, that's what you're expecting, right? I was just trying to talk in your language. But if that's not the language you're expecting, okay, well, now we got to hold this other legalese. I, it's been taking me a little while to learn legalese, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> gonna find out and we got some upcoming adventures I gotta tell you this we got a fly dust hey would you love to be a fly in the inside of my head right now what's that a yes oh oh what else do we have here let's have a look at this okay so this this is me This is the doctor. You know what the date? The date is right here. Uh, I've got everything else here too. Shepherd's Jug, Mr. Clark Street. Miss the number there, no. Nope. Anyway. Okay, so this I can do for you is so So, refills two. Take two caplets once daily. How many are there? There are 28. So, that means this bottle is two weeks. And then I get two refills, so that's a total of six weeks. Well, the date right now is August. <sighs> First, still, all day. Imagine that. Uh, it also says on here, da, 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 here, right here. Do not stop treatment without medical supervision. So I go to this guy in the hospital on the 4th of Vancouver. We'll let it pass, eh? We'll let it pass. Just let the wind go. He was a big guy. So I go to this guy on the 4th of Vancouver. <laughs> on the 4th, in the, in the Vancouver General Hospital, I go to this guy. Uh, on the 4th of Vancouver. <laughs> Gee whiz, like really. 4th of July in Vancouver, in the Vancouver General Hospital, Seagull 8 Pavilion. Oh man, this guy. Now I can't do it or what? Like, come on. He calls himself Dr. N, Dr. Neela Kant. N E E L A K A N T. And his first name is Harish, H A R I S H. Now, uh, I, I walked to the hospital on the 26th of Vancouver. Oh my God. <sighs> I walked to the hospital on the 26th of July. Asking to confirm the I we testify statements in the email that I wrote. You can get that at 26jun.2dream.ca. 
and the doctors refused to request the police to verify the statements. And rather than test whether or not they're true, they assumed that they were false. And in their assumption, they diagnosed me then with a delusional disorder, which they tried to stretch back to justify their diagnosis to cover the span of... You guys got some real big problems. You guys got some real big problems. Somewhere this message is getting through. Because it's June and not Vancouver. It's getting through. This message is getting through. That's how it works in the conscious world of the third dimension here. Thank you. Please relinquish control now to the higher authority. Thank you. Okay, we've got... <laughs> we've got a doctor in Vancouver. He meant well. Uh, so they accused me of delusions, tried to stretch it back 12 years to make it look more real, and then they, um, prescribed me medication which I was adamantly refusing, and then they told me my rights, and then they denied me my rights, then they had me forcibly injected when I tried to insist on exercising my rights peacefully, <sighs> and then he told me that I, then he coerced me, then he said I had to take it unless I wanted to stay in segregation and continue the medication. And then, uh, don't get me started on the whole sexual harassment part, okay? There's that too. Unlawful sexual exploitation of a mental patient. Definitely. That totally occurred. Yes. Dr. Sherwood. Megan Sherwood. Guilty as charged. And, uh, Nila can't. Well, you got coercion in there. And then you got, I don't know, like, what is it called? First of all, he stops me from challenging not only the the right of to have the injection. The, the, the paperwork is in order, the, the second diagnosis of, of, they even got the diagnosis wrong. If it's not even, they even have the wrong diagnosis. They just paired it what the other doctor said. They didn't even think what I was telling them was actually true. I was telling them that at the very least you should write down that the diagnosis is correctly, it is correctly bipolar disorder. <laughs> Come on already. <sighs> Multi-personality disorder, that's the correct diagnosis. Multi-personality disorder, which in an acute form becomes BPD, which is <sighs> polar disorder, bipolar disorder. Anyway, I have sporadic memory blocks at weird stuff that I know that I should be remembering. And then I spit out words sometimes that I don't intend to say and know that I didn't mean them and then I can just erase them and fix them or keep talking until that goes away uh, that's been my only mental issue my only hiccup there has been no other hearing of voices or anything else like that everything else has been completely argued out I have argued the shit out of everything so don't you guys worry uh, for now I am the higher authority don't you worry there's a check system in place Okay, the next one's five. There are fives in this one. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of information, hey? So, did we ever get on to what the doctor did then? So then the doctor, rather than just cut me off, this guy does have the sense to say, was there any more? But he did it internally. So, we're a collective in here somehow. And we're working together as one. And we know that. And so there's no like mental takeover, there's no witchcraft concerns, there's nothing, no, no possible way. There's no channeling that's happening, there's no special power that's required. He doesn't need to smoke the pipe. Uh, makes a good show, uh, gives him time to reflect, gives him his own excuse to be able to continually partition his mind is the correct answer. And he just keeps digging around until he gets it, and then he's fine. And he knows when he gets it. We have an agreement that way, it's like a mental handshake. And you, it's a unique signature for each individual so that's personal to you and that's your relationship with your higher self that's what all that's about so he had the good sense to just ask and then say you know just explain it to me keep going keep going and well eventually we ran it by him like a script for a while there and, and we well, we talk as a team so maybe that's where the idea of we comes from but it's really an eye it's definitely an eye a very big eye uh, and then 
uh, uh, very far seeing is the correct word on that one. Very far seeing. Not invasive at all. No way. Not invasive. Just far seeing. Far sighted. Yeah, not near sighted. These are for near sight, actually. You know, weird thing about that. Uh, that was the other weird thing. Now, my near sightedness is like the same as my everything sightedness. So I just have like these, these glasses on all the time now. That, that's not just not cool. That's not cool, guys. Not cool. Okay. Um,. Miss Lindsay, I'm trying to get back to her. I know that one. Was there anything else? Well, we were talking about the good doctor there in Yellow Camp. So, we got coercion on him. So, Sherwood's, Sherwood's gone for the sex. That's her crux. She had to admit to that. And that's in the uh, Hitler Bell proposal. Dot to dream dot ca. H-B-P dot to dream dot ca. And Neela can't... Um, On the 4th of July, I was in his office, uh, not his office. Was it his office? It might have very well been. I don't remember now. Oh, it might have very well been. I think there was more than one chair even, and then I asked him where I should sit. And he gave me that choice too. Um, but we went there at 9 a.m. On, on July 4th. They had me forcibly injected on the 2nd, because I was refusing to take the meds and protesting their diagnosis and protesting the right to use force to have me use meds without the right to challenge either the diagnosis or contest to have the right to contest the use of force it was horrible and then there was even the whole judicial i don't know they, they threw in a third option like are the medical certificates in place and they really aren't because i have those now and he gave me some certificates which i didn't bring outside with me but i really should uh, and they they tell me that uh, he has diagnosed me with a prescription and which is which is this 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 So now I have a video of the bottle and I have a piece of paper of the prescription from the hospital so two pieces of evidence there um, And it's not the first time the bottles come up so that one's not gonna be gone But you can't send me out of province if I was an involuntary patient in the morning time and then let me go on an airplane to nowhere to nowhere he confirmed nothing he wrote down on the paper, returning home. Well, no, home is in Taiwan. He's lying on the paper. So home is not in Toronto. There was nothing in Toronto. So in Toronto, on the way to Toronto, I made a big scene on the airplane and got the police to escort me off so that I could check out if I was wanted or not. I mean, I didn't even know. If I'm wanted, then why delay? Let's just go get it on with. And then the police decided, no, he's not wanted. And so I said, okay, then what do I do? So then I'm sitting outside, and then I was just, you know, I could smoke my, my bong for another hour. So my wife got up in Taiwan, and then she, because I didn't have any telephone numbers either. So, it's like, what kind of psychiatrist does that? So I'm going to get Air Canada to literally sue his ass, sue both their asses, and then go off to Vancouver Coastal Health. And, uh, like, either or, either they're with me or they're against me. And I know that's a, like a, you know, like a dumb, 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 dumb thing to say, but it's really like that. So, it just stops me from talking. Thank you. I'm just, I'm not happy that it has to take so long. Because I'm sleeping on my mom's couch. I don't have enough cash to really do anything. And I'm sitting here wasting my time advertising this shit on the internet instead of building a school, which is what I wanted to do at the very start. So, if this world needs that much help, like, can we please get our shit together and just, like, really, like, advertise this stuff, please? Like, it's not like anything I'm saying here hasn't already been known for the last god knows forever. I've been emailing everybody about it. Everybody knows. So just, like, get it out there. <sighs> That's number nine. A little cloud there. A little tail underneath. A little smoke. <laughs> okay. Well, then. So the number ten is going to be, like, a repeat of number one. And I already pictured what that would be. That would be, like, me doing a screen recorder while I was uploading the videos of the other pass here and then just elevating it to a new level but and to save that I would rather just yeah it's a bird it's going silent good bird to go silent there's another one coming at me that's good too I suppose <laughs>